Marcus Smart finished eighth in Defensive Player of the Year voting last season behind a handful of big forwards and centers, but just how good is he defensively? Why does he taunt LeBron James with his finals record on the front of his jersey? And can a guard really be the best defender in the league? Let's start with Smart's technical mastery of defense, using his inside hand on an opponent's hip to feel them and subtly control them. Arm bar with the back of the hand and wrist, don't push players but resist them. Jamming that arm bar in there uses Chris Middleton's drive to propel Smart in front of him and at full speed it just looks like he has spidey sense. If he can't reach your hip, he'll resist against your chest. Meanwhile, his off arm is high while those feet are chugging. He'll even feel out the dribbler's off arm. You see Paul George swat it away before getting into a step back jumper here. This is a textbook way to get into ball handlers today and Smart does it as well as anyone. Notice him reach to reconnect to the player's hip. Hand checking was outlawed decades ago, so he has to be smart about this and this helps him fight through ball screens. Dip the shoulder, keep the arm connected, and then the other hand is high. Smart keeps that other arm up to attack the ball. He's extremely accurate targeting it at the end of drives like this. And because his reaction time is matrix-like, he can produce mind-boggling defensive plays. He decelerates as he sees Giannis gather, then clamps down on the ball. Incredible for a 6'3 guard. Smart is among the league's best at forcing turnovers, but this is mostly without gambling, just applying these techniques and pawing at the ball as a nuisance as part of his normal defensive approach. Back to screen navigation, which requires reads, and sometimes Smart slides under at the last second, then re-emerges as a pest, pushing Kawhi Leonard to the sideline here and fizzling the action. On this one, Kawhi tries misdirection to get into the handoff, Smart mirrors him, then wisely slides under before getting into his body so he can go over this time, and Boston will live with that shot. Smart's combination of reaction time, quickness, and technique allow him to quash dangerous cuts like this Phoenix staple for Devin Booker. And this makes for strong ball denial against certain players, here shadowing Leonard into a technique-based deflection, then going mission impossible to force the turnover. Oh, me oh my. Smart's footwork is clinical too. Here he's crossed up, which creates space, so both arms go up and look at that diagonal backpedaling to cut off the ball. Moving backward at an angle like this limits the physical impact on the dribbler, making it hard to draw a foul. Marcus's reactions are not only lightning quick, but he's incredibly well studied. He knows to sit on Giannis's spin move here with another defender coming and takes the charge. And he knows Bledsoe goes hard or spins back, so the nanosecond he gathers, Smart plays the spin, stands his ground, and it's a miss. He really bothered the bigger Leonard in LA, inviting him to his weak hand here, then crowding him into another turnover. Marcus also uses that off arm to clog up passing lanes, knowing that there are at least two passes behind him into the left here, so he chokes off that option. Some of his steals come from this technique and those great reflexes. I mean, you've heard of no-look passes, but what about no-look steals? Some of these are just pure basketball IQ, reading an opponent's eyes and doing the spectacular. That probably saved a layup. He also has a specific technique for denying post entries that makes life difficult on passers, leading to more turnovers. Smart works for a kind of three-quarter denial, facing the entry passer and constantly moving. See how he settles inside his man's stance here, making a lob harder, and that 6'9 wingspan is just long enough for the steal. Here's another example of this low post grappling, working his way around Kevin Love to sit right in the passing lane, then getting inside his other leg when the ball is repositioned. Smart's in these spots, of course, because his bulldog build allows him to leverage those 220 pounds and keep bigger players at bay. Smart has a few go-to moves against bigs, jabbing at the ball like this or leading with his chest to hold him off, and this turns into an awkward shot. Marcus is trying to throw off timing here. That little swipe is enough to throw off Kawhi's balance, and Leonard was just two for eight against Smart in this game per NBA.com. But Marcus is vulnerable to size when players get deeper post position against him, and skilled big men can shoot over him like this with ease. 
Smart's efficiency numbers against post-ups are above average, but he's not guarding the game's very best post scores, and that limits his value as a post defender. Because he's at least passable in the post, he'll often scramble a weaker guard like Kemba Walker out to the perimeter when recognizing a mismatch, and this switchability is impressive, but I'm not always sure how much it adds to a possession. For instance, this play breaks down during the switch anyway. Despite his size, Smart also has enough vertical pop and length to rotate and offer some rim protection. When he can load up, he'll make some spectacular saves at the rim that is a Dwayne Wade special right there. But when he's flat-footed, his lack of height shows up again, and he's not able to influence shots in the paint like a big or long forward could. So he provides a little extra value for these spots in a guard, but not too much extra value relative to big twos or even threes. Marcus is great about help responsibilities in the paint though. He steps up to the roll man, then grazes this pass as part of his closeout, making the shot harder. And this is yet another textbook rotation, sinking down to help the helper, moving the big and leading to the rebound. He's also excellent at reading plays in front of him. Barry Allen would be jealous of that reaction time. And here's an impressive sequence where he stifles penetration, switches to a big, and no smart profile would be complete without him taking a charge. He's been in the top 40 in offensive foul drawing rate in each of the last two seasons. If Marcus does have a conventional weakness, it's to backdoor cuts. He's rarely ball watching per se, but instead he'll recognize a player in the corner and then won't realize when he's left. So is all of that enough for him to be a league best defender? Well, impact metrics don't think so. These stats compare a team's performance with a player on the court versus off, and some use optical tracking data, but none view any guard as having the same defensive impact as the best big forwards and centers in the game. A lot of our current defensive statistics are still fuzzy, but I do think they underrate Smart because he's often asked to play up a position, slotted next to smaller point guards in Boston. Still, his value on that end is a clear rung down from the dominant defensive bigs examined in recent videos. Slowing down pick and roll actions or reading plays brilliantly does have value, but it's not the same as a malleable paint protector. This is largely because basketball is still a game of size. A guard like Smart would still need the stature of, say, Paul George to disrupt more plays in the paint and handle different pick and roll responsibilities, and players like that end up playing forward or even some center. Like Draymond, Smart is a really strong passer, and so pairing him next to off-ball wings or even with a bigger offensive initiator could unleash Marcus as a supercharged 3 and D point guard. His three-point shooting is up to 36% in the last two seasons on high volume, and with his secondary playmaking and dynamic extra passing, he might have bona fide all-star value on a title contender this way, but unlike great defensive big men, he's not joining a team and making them a top five or top 10 defense with normal defensive teammates. I have his offense as a slight negative, but that defense is still good enough to comfortably thrust him into sub all-star territory for me, because right now I consider Marcus Smart to be the best defensive guard in basketball. To support this channel, head on over to patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. There's additional content there, including articles, videos, and podcast extras. We also have a monthly Q&A and a discussion server to talk more basketball. Thanks so much as always for watching, and I hope that you are having a great day.